Hi everyone, my name is Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. First, I'm going to go over all the supplies I used, and I'll put the links down in the description. I used cotton fabric, I used a pillowcase for this project, and then I used soda ash, which I mixed with water, and I mix it in a bucket. I also used a drop cloth to keep my workspace tidy and from getting dye all over it. I also used an erasable marker for getting my motif established. I used washable glue, such as Elmer's Blue Glue. I also used a spray bottle to re-wet my fabric before putting the dye on. I used Procyon dye or tie-dye. I used Dharmatrading, but you can use any kind of tie-dye. Squeeze bottles to apply the dye, gloves to protect my hands, and Synthrapol to wash the piece after I was done. So the first thing I did is I took my pre-washed cotton fabric and I soaked it in a soda ash solution. So this is about two thirds of a cup of soda ash to about a gallon of water. And I let it soak for about 20 minutes and I'm gonna wring it out and just get it damp. I don't want it to be too, too wet, but I want it to be damp. And I'm going to put it flat on my drop cloth to dry completely and I want it to dry as flat as I can get it and I want it to be almost like stiff like a board so that I can draw on it with my glue and my marker. So after I smoothed it out I let it dry for about 24 hours or as long as it took. Then I took my erasable marker which is also used for quilting and I just drew a little sample of the motif I was thinking about. I did some research on Pinterest and looked for sort of a floral pattern that I thought would look good. I didn't want it to be too fine. I wanted it to be something that would work with this glue. Um, so I just sort of drew this flower very sketchy and um, not too detailed. As you can see, the marker fades really fast, um, but you can sort of see it almost like a really faint pencil marking after it fades. So it was helpful, but I just wanted to get one motif drawn before I started to do the glue. So now I'm gonna come in with my washable glue. It's the blue glue, and I'm going to just let it get to the tip and start to draw on my motif that I have drawn with my erasable marker. And the key for this is just to apply pressure uh, evenly on the little squeeze bottle and to just keep it going. So even if I didn't follow the motif that I had drawn perfectly, I just wanted to keep it moving and then um, when I lift the bottle off of the fabric, I just want to make sure I'm not getting drips or anything like that. So I just go slow and I am kind of just tracing the motif that I've drawn. I'm just going to use the tracing method for the one motif and then after that I'm going to freehand the rest of the design. So if you are not into drawing a floral freehand, you could either trace something um, or the whole thing or you could just do like an abstract pattern too but for this one I just wanted to kind of freehand and see how it turned out. Another thing to keep in mind is that the glue will sort of spread after you apply it and as it dries so um, I just wanted to make sure that the glue was not too close to other parts of glue and when I do the dots inside of the flowers I want to make sure that they have enough space to kind of spread out and dry. I would also recommend just having a little piece of scrap fabric or even paper so that you can kind of practice drawing with the glue bottle and uh, I did a few practice swatches before I did any of my bigger pieces just to kind of get the hand or the feeling of 
drawing with this glue because it's it's a different thing it's a different feeling from drawing with a pen or wax or anything that I've ever done so here I've fast forwarded a little bit and I am just sort of picking up speed and drawing more flowers just as they fit into um, the empty space on the pillowcase and I'm just kind of having fun and going with it and adding leaves here and there I wanted to have a lot of interest, but I don't want them to be too cramped together. So I was just trying to keep that in mind as I was drawing. So I finished the entire pillowcase and you can see the close up of what it looks like now. I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours. I want it to be completely dry before I add any liquid dye because I want it to provide a good resist. Hey, so now I'm going to mix up the tie-dye colors. I have a swatch that I did, but this has like eight colors. I'm going to cut out the rust and the yellow color and just sort of focus on more um, pink and a warm corally color and then a green and navy color just to kind of um, simplify it a little bit. I'm going to be using um, coral pink, amethyst, navy, olive drab, and aquamarine. I'm going to mix these together to make like a teal color. You can use other colors of course or you can even use like a tie-dye kit if you have one. Um, this is just what I'm going to be using today and this is fiber reactive dyes. Um, so it's, it's Procyon dye, it is um, cold process dye, etc etc tie dye so here I am mixing up the dyes in the squeeze bottles and I like to use these little plastic knives because they fit in the necks of the bottles and it doesn't spill everywhere I can just literally put it right into the bottle so I'm using coral amethyst and navy and then I'm gonna be using olive drab and also aquamarine. So these are all from Dharma Trading. I really like Dharma Trading dyes. Um, if you don't have Dharma Trading dyes, you can also do this with a tie-dye kit. Um, I can list some of the kits that I really like down in the description below in case you guys are looking for a good vibrant colored kit. So I'm just mixing up kind of by eye and I'm gonna just put some water in there and shake it up. And of course, you know, if you want it to be darker, then you put more dye. And if you want it to be lighter, then you use less dye. Here's a little test swatch I did of the colors just to make sure I liked how they looked when they all mixed. And I was pretty happy with them. So if you're not sure, you can always play with the colors on the test swatch. So I'm gonna re-wet the piece with my spray bottle. It's totally dry, so I want to make sure that the fabric has some water on it, and then I want to make sure that the glue is still dry. I'm going to come in first with the lightest color, which is the coral, and I'm just using the coral on the flowers, so I'm just being kind of conservative at first, and I'm putting my finger over the tip just to make sure it doesn't splurt everywhere, which happens sometimes, and... So I'm just going to do all of the flowers with this coral in the middle. Then I'm coming in with a little bit of green and I'm just doing the leaves. So I just want the whole piece to have a lot of color so that the lines really pop. Now I'm coming in with the amethyst and it's really brightening it up. I'm just putting it next to the coral bits and I'm kind of just letting them run together. A little bit of dye goes a long way and I figure I can always add more dye if it's not enough saturation. I just wanted to take a moment to let you guys know that I have multiple online dyeing classes available on my website. You can get tickets to the live classes and also check out my uh, pre-recorded classes that you can just take at any time. So go to my website, Onyx Art Studios, and check it out for more information. Next, I'm gonna come in with the navy, which is the strongest color. So I'm doing that last. 
I don't want to overwhelm the piece with the navy so I'm just going in a little bit at a time and mixing it with the green and putting it on the white parts now I'm going to just spray it down with some more water just to make sure that dye is really kind of going into the other colors and I'm going to get that really nice color variation so the more I'm looking at this I'm realizing I want to put more color in because I want to make sure that the resist really pops so I'm just going to touch it up keep going until it's at a place where I really like it and mix in a little more blue put the blue into the red a little bit to make some sort of purpley colors so after I was happy with all of the dye on the piece I sprayed it down with a little bit more water to make sure that it wasn't I'm going to dry out and I let it sit for overnight so six to eight hours just like normal tie-dye but I did not put the plastic wrap on it and that's because I didn't want the glue to get soggy so on the test piece that I did I did put um, saran wrap on it and it made the glue soggy and then it made some of the dye um, a lot of a lot more of the dye seep underneath the blue glue. This one, I did not really have that happen as much. After it had been sitting overnight, I put it in the water to start to kind of soak. So I wanted to get the glue off and it did take a little while to get the glue off and I let it soak first in cold just to like get the excess tie dye off and then in hot to soften up the glue. After I did that, I washed it in the washing machine on hot with Synthrapol. And I washed it multiple times just to make sure to get that glue out. And then I dried it on hot to set the colors. Here it is, dried and washed. And I think it turned out really cool. I like how the colors kind of blended together and I think they work really nicely together. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. And be sure to check out my website for my social media and also my workshops that I offer. You can get more information on onyxartstudios.com. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more dyeing videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.